welcome dear students to this class on art and literary aesthetics in today's session we'll discuss the movement romanticism a movement across art and literature so when you hear a particular movement for example romanticism or neoclassicism uh, cubism surrealism you know what you have or you should be able to place that movement in the timeline you know in the history of art and literature you should be able to place that movement correctly you know so that you will be understand the style the important features of that movement for example if you hear uh, this movement romanticism you should understand that it's actually a reaction against the neoclassicism that uh, prevailed during the era before romantic era you know you should be able to place the movement in the history of art and literature so i hope you have listened to the previous class on the brief uh, you know where i have given an overview of uh, various movements in art and painting especially so today we'll discuss we'll see this movement romanticism or which can be seen in literature in art in painting in fashion and so on the main characteristics of romanticism is the emphasis on personal experience secondly spontaneity and freedom the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings expressed in poetry in painting then emphasis on freedom you know french revolution had a very um, very strong influence on romantic uh, movement love of nature is yet another uh, characteristic feature that we can see in the romantic movement so this is one example of uh, this painting is uh, from the romantic era and another important feature is that we see that importance is given to commonplace uh, things to commonplace uh, situations to to commoners commoners became the heroes of uh, poetry plays of this time and a fascination with the supernatural and the exotic uh, is also seen during this era in the poems of uh, Coleridge for example Kubla Khan you know we find this um, in the poetry of Keats you know we find this love for medievalism love for exotic supernatural things and another uh, this is another important feature that is the that's an emphasis on personal experience you know this example is uh, from william blake who wrote songs of innocence and songs of experience you know that is uh, where he talks about he, uh, he wrote about the complexity of his own mind of human mind and one's emotions glorification of individual rather than the emphasis on the greater world this is a powerful expression of a desire for personal freedom and this is a second feature that is spontaneity and freedom romantics criticized the neoclassic artificiality so you might have uh, gone through neoclassicism in art and literature you know where uh, importance was given uh, to reason to logic to artificiality you know uh poetry and art was from the brain from it was an outcome of your intellect not from your mind not a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings as we see in romantic poetry you know in romantic poetry and in painting we find a free play of emotion and an emotional outburst and the love of nature in the poems in the poetry of wordsworth coleridge shelley keats um, you know in all the romantic uh, poets and the romantic painters we find this uh, love for nature romantics didn't use nature for its own sake but used nature to represent and symbolize something else importance of commonplace things you know humble subjects the poor leech gatherer Uh, a solitary reaper you know they became the heroes and heroines of uh, 
art and literature of this period you know sel they celebrated the ordinary things the only one poet who didn't actually accept a lowering of standards was lord byron who talked about uh, kings uh, freedom fighters and so on fascination with supernatural and exotic um, things were also common uh, we find a certain obsession with the supernatural the allure of the unknown you know the mystery of the medieval castles the medieval knights and so on you know and another important thing that you need to note uh, at this point of time is this uh, the introduction of the gothic style you know, gothic art actually uh, became popular you know it was a kind of architecture that was popular during the medieval period and with the advent of romanticism in art and literature this uh, gothic style was revived and we find this gothic element in novels in poetry and so on coming to the origins of romanticism it's actually as a result of the problems in the 1780s when personal freedoms were denied child labor factory abuse lack of representation in parliament laws denying rights to religious groups you know these were uh, problematic at that point of time and also romantic movement was as a result of power hungry napoleon who in 1799 tried to take over europe and very important thing is that it actually rejected the neo classical thinking this movement emerged as a reaction against the neo classical movement you know it's a very brief comparison between the neo classical and the romantic era the neo classical era stressed on reason and common sense but when we come to romantic uh, era the emphasis was on emotions imagination they were fascinated with the um with the scope of imagination objective issues concerning society as a whole for example politics religion were the subject matter for neo classical art and literature but in romantic uh, romantic uh, art and literature subject the issues concerning the individual their desires their hopes and dreams were dealt in detail neo classicism respected human institutions of church and state but romantic movement exalted nature in all creative and destructive forces the neo classical artists believed in order of all things in logic in control but the romantics they believed in the spontaneity of thought and emotion and action while neo classical uh, artists maintained the traditional standard you know they looked unto the um, looked up to the greek and roman masters and followed those traditional standard but romantics they believed in experimentation and reflected on childhood primitive society and common man but neo classical artists they focused on adult concerns of the ruling class alone the neo classical artists exercised controlled wit and urbanity on the other hand romantics they celebrated intense passion and vision while neo classical artists followed formal rules of diction and poetry romantics experimented and sought for sort of more natural poetic diction and form romanticism can be seen across the arts it was a movement across all the arts including visual art architecture fashion music and literature in fashion uh, we find uh, this influence of influence of romanticism uh, you know in the kind of dressing uh, fuller skirts and intricate sleeves with bod and uh, bodices you know were used at the start of the romantic era fashion was based on classical principles of flowing grecian robes they had an eastern exotic feel with egyptian decoration as well 
and towards the end you know the style changed and coming to the architecture you know the gothic style of architecture was uh, uh, revived during this period they sought to revive the medieval forms in distinction to the classical styles which were prevalent at that time enormous of uh, pillars domes became popular and in art again you know uh, in painting uh, we find this influence on of romanticism if by my romanticism people mean the free display of my personal impressions my remoteness from the servile copies repeated ad nauseam in academies of art and my extreme distaste for academic formulae then yes i am indeed a romantic eugene de la croix french painter so this french painter he painted many uh, paintings of this era and the one that you have to study is uh, liberty leading the people uh, i hope you have listened to that class and in music we find a freedom in form and design a more intense personal expression of emotion in which fantasy imagination and a quest for adventure play an important part and in literature we have this big six coleridge wordsworth blake keats shelley and byron so we have the poetry you no know, uh, in course of this uh, uh, semester you will be learning poems of uh, coleridge wordsworth and all these uh, poets belonging to the romantic era in england coleridge and wordsworth you know together they published this lyrical ballads in 1798 which is considered to be the manifesto of romanticism in literature Wordsworth wrote that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions recollected in tranquility and coming to Coleridge he wrote of subjective experiences such as dreams visions and hallucinations he considered the dream state as a, as a window to the human soul to get a glimpse of our soul kids and a uh, plague John Keats with the private emotions of the individual he was talking about the emotion deep emotions of human beings concerned with the quality of beauty he was not influenced by revolutionary ideas like uh, Wordsworth and uh, Wordsworth and Shelley Blake is an artist a poet and a visionary uh, who had visions that were inspired by infinity he wrote of the contrary states of human soul of experience and of innocence shelley and byron both of them again were uh, influenced by french revolution uh, byron was a rebel he is called mad bad and dangerous to know by one of his lovers he created characters of great passion and strong will he kept to the classical forms of diction and poetry shelley wanted to change the world through love imagination and poetry his poem o to the west wind is a best example in which he wanted to change make a change on the world he wanted society to transcend the evil of society so these are the famous poets that you will come across during this romantic era in american literature as well at this point of time you find a uh, romanticism uh, in art and literature and all, all over europe uh, you find this um, romantic movement uh, in art architecture in literature in painting and so on so please go through all the uh, sessions go through all the movements that you to, that you have to look into um learn an essay question on romantic era you have to write about the features of romantic era the main ideals the impact of french revolution so all these things should be included when you write uh, an answer write an answer on romanticism i hope it is clear right uh, don't forget to mention french revolution because it had a very strong influence on uh, this movement 
and also learn other movements as well cubism surrealism post impressionism and pre raphaelite movement thank you